You are now listening to the Purple Fox Podcast. All right. What's going on, everybody? This is Kevin Eze, your host of the Purple Fox Podcast. And today with me in the foxhole, I have uh, Maisha Cal- Cal- Calfani. Yes. Is that right? Kind of funny? Okay. You did. AKA Debbie Maisha, which is what I first knew her as. Um, I believe it's like a it's like a two parter for you, right? Yeah. Okay. It is. Yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll get into that. Um Maisha is a sensual energy alchemist and an embodiment guide who works with women to shift their mindset and disrupt thought patterns that keep them from expressing their authentic and powerful sensual selves. Um, so Maisha, just just uh, one of the things I usually do in the beginning is to give our audience uh, a bit of an intro. So um, I'll start with um, the lens of anyone who decides to call themselves an alchemist is is always one I take special interest in. Okay. Um, an alchemist is someone who transmutes or transforms one entity into another form. What I've been excited about more recently is the emergence of alchemists within the sensual sexual realm building bigger platforms on social media uh, and reaching broader audiences i've always viewed the the wisdom they impart as um, the missing link in our dysfunctional society many people see these kinds of teachers and heavily misconstrue their messaging to paint them as something weird or strange despite you know m- most of these modalities existing for 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 centuries upon centuries before westernized societal norms. You know, I don't have to tell you that. Um, part, of, <laughs> part of my own personal work has been, um, like we talked about before, bridging the gaps between my Western education and these avenues of wisdom that I tap into. Uh, this is why I'm excited to have you, Maisha, on here with us to discuss your path. Um, it's about time that this kind of work makes its way to center stage. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I want to ask you is how how did this path get started for you? Oh, my gosh. You know, I haven't found a really succinct answer for that question. Um, the I guess the easiest answer and, and the answer for most people to grasp is um, after my marriage, which was quite toxic and very unhealthy, uh, I really had to look at what was going on and and found myself in this space where all of the things that I had learned over my lifetime were now swirling around me. And it was this question of why did I end up here? Mm -hmm. How did I end up in this marriage? How did I end up in this space? And what do I need to do to shift whatever that was Mm -hmm. so that I can be the woman that I'm, that I'm meant to be. Mm -hmm. And that that's really the easiest way to answer that question. I think. Mm -hmm. Like what, what, where did you like start initially? Like what, so, so the, the marriage is like, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta find something. I gotta do something new. I gotta do something like, what was the first thing you did? Like, what did you, what was like the first thought? Like, oh, this may be the first step on that path. Like, what was that? Yeah, I, well, the first step after I left was to ball up in the corner, constantly right. Right. dissociated right. from from myself. Uh-huh. And I know this now, like I can say this in hindsight, none mm. of this I knew then. Mm. Not um, going through it actively. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. trying to raise children at the mm. same time, right? Mm-hmm. The second step was to have lots of good random sex, and well, mm. not always good, with some mm. folks because that was the way that I, I could feel. Mm. and something that is so interesting just tonight as I was talking to my daughter um I I said to her oh my gosh one of the ways that I you know I didn't realize I was dissociated but sex was one of those ways that got me in my body Mm. that's Mm. how I I could be in in myself right one of the fastest ways to tap in to that layer whatever that is yeah and so there was a lot of that Mm. and then there was okay wait this 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 isn't all you hear what's what's really happening and and i started signing up 
for, you know, and I had taken courses and things before, but I said, let me really start to look at this on a deeper level. Mm. And that was around 2014, I think, when that really started to happen. Hmm. And and what what did you find in 20? You said 20. 14. 14, what I, yeah. yeah, what I found was that I was just, I was really a hot mess and I had no idea who I was. I mm. had no idea. And, and I'm still kind of in that space because now life is transitioning in a different way. Right. Um, I, you know, I didn't know who I was outside of the marriage. I, I didn't know how to think for myself. I got, I got married at 23. Mm. I, I, I had not been a woman. Right. I, I was a mom. He had a daughter. So I was an instant mom. And then we had children. I had no idea who the woman was. And mm. so that was my first step of who are you independent of a man? When when it wasn't working, what was your idea of marriage? Like what 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 do you what did you think it was supposed to be? I mean, you knew that wasn't it. But like what at that time, what did you think it was? I thought it was like boyfriend and girlfriend living together forever. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there was no there wasn't any real uh explanation for me and my right. family my parents didn't really i don't think they really knew what, yeah. what marriage was they, they'd yeah. gotten divorced when i was a teenager so mm. you know there were a lot of questions that just weren't asked of me and a, not enough asked of him and it was just okay yeah you seem happy go yeah. for it yeah. yeah, and that's 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 the that's the one of the sad parts about this world. Um, but also an avenue for us to to start to learn is that there's there's no real handbook for that kind of thing. Like there's no there's no courses. You know, we take courses in math and, and English, but like we don't we don't take courses in marriage. You know, I mean there's there 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 is starting to open up in that way. Like there there are people counselors and things like that who are kind of teaching that, but like. When you uh, you were twenty three, you weren't you didn't know to look for that, you know. That's not. Oh no, and certainly not in nineteen ninety seven. Right, that wasn't even a, you know that's more of a new age sort well, of thing now, you know. Yeah, yeah, it really yeah. is, and and you know there was there was there was therapy after the fact of you're right. already here, right? And then there's supposed to be marriage counseling before you get married, but mm -hmm. from everyone I've ever spoken to, it's like six sessions and certain things, but but right. not not really the deeper stuff of. What are your childhood traumas and triggers yeah. and how are you interacting with each other? How do you handle yourself when you're angry or you handle yourself? What's your communication style? No, none of these questions were asked and probably still aren't really asked amongst amongst premarital counseling counselors. It's still not a thing. Mm. Yeah. So when you when you started to tap into who this person was, who this body was, who Maisha was um what started to happen for you like what 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 were you starting to learn and, and find and understand about yourself well the first thing that i discovered was that i was angry mm. and i had grown up that that was just not expressed mm. um sadness maybe a little bit anger was definitely not a thing and mm. it took me some time to just allow myself to be angry you know, whatever it was I wanted to be angry with or whoever it was I wanted to be angry at. Right. Um, so that's the first thing that I discovered. And this isn't this isn't that you never got angry, right? It's that you, there was an underlying anger that you weren't in touch with. Or is it you just never got angry? I really rarely got angry. If you wow. ask my children, they will tell you I really rarely got angry. I was just very cool and calm and subdued and and in freeze and fawn and dissociated response right. and it's gonna be okay yeah. so i i couldn't even allow myself to feel all of what that was underneath yeah it scared me yeah did it scare you when it started to come to reveal itself absolutely <laughs> so, <laughs> so, the, <laughs> so i went to this i went to this program in 2016 uh -huh. um and it was it was Regina Tama Shower, uh, okay. Mama Gina. Oh, Mama and, Gina. Okay. And yeah. yeah, and that's how I ended up meeting a lot of the people that we, we mm -hmm. shared in, in our community. Mm -hmm. um, but I went to this. It was four months weekends, and the first weekend, you know, she she's going through her thing, and and you know, anger comes up, and and you know, basically invites the woman to get into some rage and all of that, mm -hmm. and I freaked out. 
Like mm. I was honestly, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I was like, this is some, this is some white woman shit. You know, I, was, I I'm like one of the few chocolate chips in there. I'm holding my hands here. <laughs> I'm like, this is craziness. We don't do this, mm. you know. And I and then the next time I tried to leave, mm. I, I couldn't even take their hearing their screams. It was like, mm. no, we don't do this. Mm. It wasn't until the fourth weekend that I was. I was able to let some out and it was another weekend event that I did with another um, woman where I was able to like scream the word, no, I couldn't get it out of my throat. That's how disconnected I was. And this is in my late thirties. Right. Hmm. Um, so one of the, one of the concepts I'm interested in exploring with you is, is, uh, it's alchemy because to for to transmute that kind to 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 take all that anger you had inside and to to start to to allow that to clear out and and reveal itself so that it can become a more regular thing because one one of the one of the things that um i i always think about was um i forgot who said it specifically but you can't selectively numb so if you're numbing anger, you're numbing everything else. So you can't experience more joy, more sadness, more uh, uh, excitement, more anything, you know. Um, and it requires that alchemy to to kind of kind of rub that out so that it's it's uh, you're more expansive as a person. And you can feel all those things. So like, what for you um, as a, a central energy alchemist? What what is your definition of alchemy? My definition of alchemy is to take one one substance, one emotion, one experience, and transmute it into something that's beneficial. Mm. That's it's 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 similar to the question that people will ask themselves now. You know, I went through this experience. Instead of what what why is this happening to me? Is why is it happening for me? Mm, I love that. Yeah, love and that. so and and it's a very the, careful it, reframe. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is, and so looking at the experience. Um, as an observer of self and, and what is necessary here, what is this teaching me? What is this, what is this allowing for me? What is this opening for me? Because a lot of times we think experiences are here to close us to print and we want to be protected right. because the, they don't feel good, but it's really how much more can I open? Right. And that's that, that, that type of alchemy is not, it is not always easy at all. Mm. What's, what do you think is the hardest part for you around it? For me, the hardest part has been and still is because I'm I'm very human. Um, gosh, this is so funny. My daughter was saying to me as we, we were coming home from this uh, Caribbean dance class and mm. I gave her a book by Pema Chodron, who's a, a Buddhist monk. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she's like the, 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 the struggle is remaining open in the face of things that hurt the pain that you're having, but mm. not, not shutting down, you know? And part of me is like, yes, go mom, you know, mm. and that, but also part of me is like, you know, that's still something that I cycle through. I, I don't, I don't know that it ever ends. And if it does mm. for other people, kudos to them. For me, it has not. I don't think but that I, that's my experience. Ever well. ends. No, it yeah. No. But so I still find myself in spaces where I have to remind myself that this this is not happening to me, it's for me. And and where can I open it? And just recently, and this is really so good, you have no idea how on time this actually is. Mm. Um, for the past couple of months, I really closed, but I, I, I felt like I had to mm. because I realized like it, it turning 49 did something for me metaphysically. I, I don't know if it's because, you know, it's, it's the seventh, you know, my seventh time going uh, of seven, you know, seven times seven is 49. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the chakras, some people do in the, in the metaphysical, in the, in the spiritual world, each chakra aligns with a zero to seven, you know, eight to 14. And so I've completed that, that full cycle, but it definitely opened my eyes to see how disconnected I'd actually been, even in the midst of my business. Mm. And that I needed to step back for a while. And 
find myself in my body on a deeper level. Just, just, it had to be on a deeper level. And so I kind of, I kind of closed and had to go inward Hmm. for a while. Um, But it's a natural cycle. It it is. And I, and I'm seeing that now in the, in the beginning, I was like, why is this happening? Right. You know, that's the first question, right? Like I'm on a roll here. Why is this, you know, and why are certain things not happening? Why is certain things not aligning? And it was really that there was some deeper work that I had to do and I couldn't do that and teach at the same time. And I see that with a lot of people who do the kind of work we do. Cause it's like, you like, especially if you tap into something where you're like on, you know, like you're on and life is just is going so well. And then you hit this place and you're like, oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Am I failing? No, I'm not supposed to be going down here. Like I'm, I'm going down, you know. Right. But it's, it's you know, you, you, it's, a, it's part of the cycle. You know, you, you got to you got to hit that down and come back up. You know, you really do. And, that, and that's the part. That's the part that I know is missing mm. in and in, in what. I see some people teaching, especially in, in the realm of sensuality, mm. there, there is this up, there is this the continuous you know, up, the yeah, in, this infinite up. It feels <laughs> so great. And it's your body is all lit up. And I'm like, no, no, you, you have not even begun, No, <laughs> but that's, what's marketed, you know? And I think right. that's why I had to step back as well, because it was like, I got to show people. I got to show people where the devil is, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to go to hell. The demon, the devil, the yeah. the, the deeper parts, the one the parts yeah. that no one wants to look at in themselves. You know, Absolutely. you have to you have to touch that and then find out that you don't have to stay there. You know. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I needed to do, uh, without teaching others for during the winter where it's dark and. God of synergy is closed off. I was just like, well, 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 once mm-hmm. it all came together for me, I was like, oh, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And you know, what's, what's interesting is that that's for me, that's kind of respectable because I, I know, I know some people would actually teach through that, you know, and, and teach the, the down, but, but, you know, that, that's, I mean, maybe because we're both Virgos. I don't know, um, but like, <laughs> yeah. for, me, for me, I like I like to experience my 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 uh, my downs in solitude. You know, absolutely. And then, yeah, and then I come back when I'm like I have something to offer the world. You know, yes, but, yeah. absolutely. Uh, that, that's just I, maybe that's just Virgo thought. I don't know. It, 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 yeah, yeah, maybe, but yeah. The, it was definitely that. Like, I gotta, I gotta go through this and come out on the other side. Yeah. Like, I can't, I can't take you all with me through this. And then, and then my 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 teaching is gonna be distorted. I don't mm-hmm. know what mood I'm gonna show up mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. I, you know, there's been days when I've been like, I don't want to have anything to do with the world, and days when I'm like, yeah, let's let's be social, and then, and it, and literally in the same day. Right. So no, I was no, I'd, I'd have canceled <laughs> too many sessions, classes, and groups. Right. <laughs> um, so what, as you've been doing this work, what, what has been your experience opening up your, your specific body of work to the world? Like what, what has like the reception been like for you? And like, what, how has it been in your body? Mm. Challenging, mm-hmm. challenging because, um, I'm going against the grain of what has been embedded in the minds of women. And my clientele generally tends to be black women Mm -hmm. and they're coming. I didn't grow up in the church. Um, I mean, I grew up in the nation of Islam, but it is a little different. And my parents were initially Buddhist when I was, when I was little. So that, you know, when people ask me, how did you get here with your journey? I'm like, well, I started meditating at four. So that was in there already, Mm -hmm. but going against the grain of what it means to be the good girl of what it means to be a good Christian of what it means to be respectable of what it, you know, means to be there. There are all these layers that these women are dealing with in terms of being seen a certain way and they're fighting against themselves and their families and society, corporate America, uh, religion. And it's, it's very challenging at times to just to say, Hey, you know, you can do whatever it is you want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's really this idea that, no, I can't, I I will, I will lose this or that. I can't show up this way. I have to keep it tight. I I have to stay closed. Mm -hmm. 
and and that's that that can be a challenge to um to work through but uh it's 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 it's, it's still the work that that lights me up because when the women do see when they when they feel into their power there's a light that turns on for them and there's a boldness mm. that they have and mm. how they want to move through the world and then they they choose differently to and to this reminds me the first part of the when you asked why i got into this work i really didn't i really initially got into work with men mm. first because i saw there? I saw how my ex-husband was and I, and, you know, we had so many discussions after the divorce about his experiences and he's passed away now, but it's Mm. the, 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 you know, the abuse that he went through sexually, emotionally, physically, and, Mm. and stuff that I didn't know when we got married and Mm. how that affected our marriage. And he'd never gone through or been through any of the things that I had in terms of like peer support groups in high school or therapy or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, if I work with the men, then then maybe I can help them, <laughs> save them. And and then they save won't- Save the keep, world. Yeah, they <laughs> keep their women that way. Right. As you can imagine, ego was strong mm-hmm. with, with men and that was a difficult road. And so I said, mm-hmm. I said okay. And I was a personal trainer. I was like, and I hear the women talking to me like, okay, man, I'll work with the women, you know, because maybe I can just show them who they are, like shine a light, you know, mm-hmm. and then maybe they'll choose different. Mm-hmm. And, and in choosing different, they can avoid some of the pain that I went through. So that mm-hmm. was also part of the catalyst is I, I had to have been in that marriage for some reason. I had to have gone through those things for some reason. And it wasn't just... For me to sit in the corner or have sex with lots of guys, it it there has to have been something for me, and and there was there was a way that I, I started to tap into that, and and for my own self, transmute that pain that I felt into something, that was powerful, and I just I really wanted other women to be able to experience that as well. Mm-hmm. Not that the pain goes away or it stops all mm-hmm. the time or anything, but learn how to shift it. Mm-hmm. When you see that that light flicker in them, yeah. knowing that knowing that you 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 know how to recognize that and you've 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 gone through that, so you know what it feels like to to have that light kind of glisten. Yeah. When you see that in other women, what's that like for you? Oh, it, it's like the it's I don't have words. What came to me when you said that was like here, like opening like rays of sunlight. Mm. That's that's what it feels like. That's what it's like. It's like sun, like the sun just bursts open. Yeah, that's that's all I, I got. Like <laughs> nice. Um, sort of bring it to here, like now, um, and also a little bit more external, um, through your lens. Like what, what do you think this world in this very moment needs in your opinion? What the world yeah. needs now. Um, I really think, I really think the world needs to slow down. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like, it feels like everyone's just, they're running away from the emptiness they don't want to face it and and they don't want to turn around and look at at those at those those demons those those the ugly monstery things that live in their mind if if we don't do that it's to me it's catastrophic it's just it's just it's it's zombies it's people who are alive, but they're not living. They're they're existing, but they're so glued into everything external to keep them numb that they can't they can't feel themselves. And so, what what I feel like the world needs now, and it's 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 big, is is that the world needs people to just slow down and and turn around and just start and just start looking, start looking at it. For 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 someone who doesn't know what to look at, um, 
what's what's one simple thing they can start with hmm. sitting in silence it's that's very uncomfortable for a lot of people very uncomfortable um also looking at themselves in a mirror which i didn't know is very uncomfortable for a lot of people hmm. they, they there are people who They'll look when they're brushing hair or right. teeth, but Something just to do. like, yeah, right. But just like go in the mirror and just look in your own eyes for no reason. Mm. There are people who who are like, I've never done that, mm. or or I or they've tried, and and it just they ten seconds in, they they couldn't they couldn't look at what they saw. So, so one of those two things, sitting in silence or just looking at yourself in a mirror, just being able to do that is, is a, is a start as much as one can, right? Five seconds, 10 seconds. What's your experience of that? For myself or for others? Yeah, for you. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I, I've been meditating since I was a child. Mm -hmm. So that that silence is not an issue for me. I'll literally sit on my bed with nothing on and just stare out the window just mm -hmm. and notice the thoughts in my mind, mm -hmm. you know? Um yeah, yeah. And and for the mirror, I mean I you know, I had this book by Louise Hay Mirror Work and I got that, oh my God, that was early two thousands maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But even before that, I never thought about it because I always just looked at myself in the mirror. I look at my eyes, or, you mm -hmm. know. And so there was never a point where it was like, I couldn't look at myself and now I could. It's just, it always was. And and because there are things that I've been able to do that were not an issue for me, coupled with the, the painful experiences that I went through, it was like, okay, maybe this is something that you can give to to other people because there are certain parts of this that just come very naturally to me. It's just who I am. It's mm. not something I ever, the sensuality isn't something I ever cultivated. It's just who I am. Sometimes I kind of wish it wasn't, but, <laughs> but it's just who I am. Right. Mm. And so maybe that's my gift. And, and that's something that I can, you know, present to other women in that if, if there's an area of your life that you'd like to tap in, in this way, let's see how we can, how we can cultivate that in you. Mm. No, I, I love those two things. One, I mean, I've, I've been, one of the first things I ever started doing was sitting. So sitting meditation is, is a game changer for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. Um, but the mirror work you were talking about, um, it reminded me of something, one of, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite expressions, expressions or phrases, I don't know what you would call it, but um, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love that because, and one of when it, I I had always heard that like teachers had always taught uh, told me that, uh, and I, I would hear it, and it never really registered until one day I was actually looking in the mirror and I was brushing my teeth, and then I started to notice how I was brushing my teeth, you know, hard, you know, trying to get it done, um, uh, being rough with all the areas, trying to you know scrub, yeah, and then I was like, wait a minute. That's a lot of force. That's that's unnecessary speed where I can be softer and more fluid. Mm. That's place I can slow down, you know? Mm. Like where in the rest of my life am I doing that? And then yeah. seeing all these places that I use force, I'm too fast, I'm too hard and aggressive, mm. I'm too, you know, all these things down the line. And so when I imagine that mirror work, I can imagine someone, you know, checking their hair, you know, uh, their, their glasses or their, their, their clothes, getting ready for work, but they're not really looking. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's, that's, a, that's a really beautiful exercise, I think. Yeah. It is. And, and the people who have done it have, have shifted mm -hmm. how they see themselves, literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in the age of social media, oh, God. <laughs> how, how, how do people usually confuse your message? 
sex, sex, oh, yeah. sex, and more sex and right. sex. Sacrilege. Yes, that's all. <laughs> that's all it is. People <laughs> come to me. They're like, "So you're a sex coach? Um, you know, you're you're a tantra coach?" And I'm like, "Yes, and mm -hmm. you know, this this need to put folks in boxes. Like, you can't be the the idea of sex and spirituality is still so foreign." Yeah. still so far and 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 I, I i because i've been in such a bubble with folks for so long mm -hmm. you know it's like stepping outside into the real world it's like oh there are people who really they have no clue yeah. if i say something like sacred sexuality what is that or or just being sensual is not sex is like huh? um so they think it's just all about sex yeah and and you know for the people who do have some clue I, I don't really blame them for thinking the things that they think because there's a lot of toxic mimics, you know. Absolutely. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, modalities that don't get to the truth of it, and they've heard those things and they've heard them regurgitated time and time again, and then they they build up this image of what they paint. They paint. Unfortunately, that's what human beings do. They just paint things with a broad brush, you know, not even not looking at the nuances of, of anything that's happening. It's just, oh, that kind of work. Oh, I'll put that in that category, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't blame them for uh, thinking like that. They could expand their mind a bit, but um, that's, yeah. That's what I, that's what I hope to do. Yeah. That, that, that is, is that this idea that as women, like sex is this thing that you do in the, in the bedroom, only in the bedroom. Hmm. That you don't really talk about or tell anybody about so like just just uh for valentine's day um i'm on this audio app clubhouse and mm -hmm. we were doing this erotic poetry room mm -hmm. now it, you know you can record rooms but in this particular room the replays were off mm -hmm. and even though the replays were off people still clam up grown adults mm -hmm. clam up with the idea of talking about anything erotic or sexual or sensual mm. you don't you don't discuss it mm. well then my thing is if you're not discussing it at all are you discussing it with the person you're having sex with and the answer for most people is no they're not no. they yeah. do not communicate mm. <laughs> That's, it's it's not it's not even sad isn't even the word it's like painful painful think about that it is like with your partner the person that you you're supposed to be sharing the most intimate and 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 deep drudging emotions and feelings with around those to topics trust. those trust yeah it's it's painful to think about that that they're not talking about that yeah 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 how, how do you usually work people around with people around talking about that like with, with the women you work with uh, I, I give them talking points. Mm. I really, nice. it's 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 just you know, depending on who the woman is and where where they have or have not begun the conversation. I you know, mm. I mean, I've role played discussions, you know, with them being their their male partner and and me being you know kind of them in a way. And it's it's really just helping them to get comfortable, especially if you've been with someone for a while mm. and you've not had these conversations. It can be jarring. It can be jarring for some men, and it's like, whoa, you know, there there could be a, a am I doing something wrong feeling? And I'm like, that's not what we want, mm. right? We don't. That's not the feeling we want to invoke. Right. So, and it really gets down to how you communicate. So we work on communication skills. You know, as standing in your power as a woman, it's it, we really start from scratch. I love that. I love that. Um, how how much easier? I mean, I know women come with their own sets of challenges, but is it is it easier to work with women or men? In some ways, it's easier to work with men, but it's because I'm a woman. Right. Okay. And so they're receptive in a different way mm. um and then in some ways it's easier to work with women because there are no strange blurred lines as mm. there can sometimes be with men All right and I, I would imagine is would there be more trust with women as as opposed to to men I mean, because for me, I haven't found either either that that's been great across the board, not not one okay. more than the other. 
honestly. Okay. And I, I, so I used to do body work with men. Right. Okay. Oh, and wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would do body work with them. And th there was this extreme amount of trust there because mm -hmm. they're really in a vulnerable position. Right. Uh, right. And then with the women, I found that when they work with me, it's because they trusted me. Something just drew them there and it was, I need to be here. Yeah. And also, I, I'd imagine anyone who's made it through that barrier of deciding they're going to work with you is willing to toss themselves in the ring in that way anyways. So yeah, they that, are. That's yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that that's half half the battle is choosing to say yes to the, the work, you know, absolutely. So absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure that trust will just fall where it is. Yeah. Um, this question is is one that I'm particularly interested in and and one that um, I've I've I really want your take on because um, it's it's very sensitive when we're talking about race and um, it's 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 something that I've wanted to see more uh, black people in general step into but there's I mean, I'm sure I don't have to tell you there's layers upon layers of things that someone would have to to wade through. I mean, just thinking about some of the stuff that I had to go through when I was doing my um, uh, decade plus of work around this. Um, so what 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 was the what is and has been the strangest part about stepping into this work in a black body for you? Uh, the misconceptions. Mm. We touched on it earlier. Mm. There's there's a label of whore that's kind of attached to, a, a, you know, a, especially because of the the religious right. teachings that so it's, many it's of us have had. Yeah, it's even deep. if you weren't in the church, you yeah. you it's it 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 hasn't not touched you in in some way. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I've had I <laughs> my mother was you know. <laughs> I asked about a, I asked the, where I could find a brown dildo because I was, I was doing an oral sex class mm -hmm. and, and she did not understand why I would talk about that on, mm -hmm. on social media. So we had to have a discussion. I don't think my parents <laughs> follow me on Facebook anymore. Uh, I think we're sure. <laughs> still friends, but they don't follow me. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, I don't know what you you do is it something around sex and then it's why do you have to be half naked mm -hmm. you know like your body's supposed to be covered and this discussion about but it's my body and then you get into this modesty and supposed this idea to be. right respect so strong, yeah. right and i'm always like well it, then it feels like like there are these underlying tones of strange prostitution that i don't think people understand are being given in, mm -hmm. in our community so it's like you need to earn the respect by not doing these things like this is the price you pay yeah and that's and that's what i mean accepted. right and that's what i mean i meant earlier by you know all the all the the, the ways that you know, the misconceptions that can come with yeah. the things that they've heard that don't really you know oh god no I don't, I don't know what you would call it like muster up or or meet 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 a standard of of the the actual work that would have that that alchemy you know yeah. transpire yeah. you know yeah, it's yeah it's rough but usually it's yeah it's it's this idea that it's that this is about about sex and it's about promiscuity mm. um it's of the devil mm. for sure mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um <laughs> i laugh at that but yeah that's there's all it's not good it's not mm. it's not good it's not modest it's not pure it's not wholesome it's it's mm. not right And what what what's what are some of the things that you had to work through for your because I mean that's that's programming I mean we had that programming when we were doing this work so like um, I mean I can talk like some of the stuff I had to go through I know um, just I don't know just the the concept of 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 feeling more as a black man mm. was was Woo. challenging for me. Yes. Because I didn't know what to do with those feelings. And as a black man, I didn't know the appropriate ways to express those feelings because there aren't many examples of of 
you know, radiant body feeling black men, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do I turn to? I don't know. Uh, hey, know. What's wrong with you, man? Uh, what you doing? What are you doing, man? <laughs> Put that away. <laughs> and it'll be women who will say the same thing. Right. Right. You know, right. what are you doing? What is all of that? That's not, no, don't do that. Man up. Right. Yeah. 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 So for you, like, how, how was that moving through those waters? Um, you know, there, there's a part of me, I, there's a part of me, and I don't know if it's the Virgo-ness or, or just me. There's a part of me that doesn't care what other people think. I, I don't know where that came from, but there's a part of me that has always been the rebel mm -hmm. in my family that has always been, uh, you know, that's my Isha doing that crazy. <laughs> Whatever uh, it is. We're very similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Smaisha going off on a three day silent meditation retreat. Smaisha doing some water fast. Smaisha doing, like, what are you, why are you doing all these things? You know, and I'm always like, because there's something calling to me, right? I mean, now, one of the things specifically for me that I did not get over until about 2016, 2017 was saying the word pussy. Okay. That was a no no. That's never been a problem for me. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was it because because I was raised in the time. I mean, you know, I came up in the seventies, right mm -hmm. in the eighties. So I was, and my parents were very, you know, into into Black Panther, and I, and I was raised in a nation of Islam, and so mm -hmm. there was this. And I'm the eldest grandchild and child. I'm the eldest mm -hmm. on both sides of the family. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. And yeah. and and education was key, mm -hmm. you know. And so I was going to grow up, and I was going to be smart, and I was going to go and save my community, mm -hmm. and I was going to do it as a respectable, respectful Black woman, and be seen, you know, as a woman of God in that way pussy does not fall nope. into that description pussy. I, what? Right, yeah that's it's it's <laughs> what? we don't do that here we don't we don't use those terms yeah. here you yeah. know and so that was a rough one mm. for me that and then now now i can't imagine now the other words just and i tell them when i can see them kind of cringe still and i understand that i get it i'm like vulva just Every time I hear that, I think of the car, the Volvo. It just, it doesn't feel nice. I don't like it. It's a hard, it sounds hard. Vagina doesn't sound sexy. Um, I was like, but pussy is something that that you can, you can make love to and you can fuck. Like you can it do all It rolls things. off the tongue. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. It rolls off the tongue. The others are just vagina. Volvo. So it's it's the word that I love because it just and Grace Jones made it sound so great in Boomerang when she said it. You know, I was like ah. But that was that was one of the things that when I could say that word, I was like, oh, something done shifted because mm -hmm. never. That was the word that the nasty girls used. Yeah, the bad girls, the fast kids. Yeah. A literal pattern has to shift for that energy to leave your mouth, you know? Yes. Like you have to like reconfigure for it to make its way. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's yeah. a little bit more shedding of the good girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um what what do you say to women who are skeptical of this work? You should be. Mm. Because it will strip you of everything that you thought you were and it's unpredictable and you may have no idea where you're going to end up. So do not embark on it until you're ready for that type of adventure. Cause once you start, you know, there's, there's just no going back. Yeah. So be prepared. If you're not prepared to lose anything, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. I know. I, um, I wasn't fully prepared. I don't think I was in the least, but mm -hmm. I knew I knew I was willing, mm -hmm. but I, I, knew I wasn't prepared for what happened and, and, and the things that I've, I've had to, you know, be confronted with time and time again, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs> Not at all. No. And it, it's, it's so funny. Um, sometimes my kids look at me and they're like, why did you raise us like this? Like, 
you know, because even in the midst of me being dissociated in the midst of the, the what what I was dealing with in my marriage, there was still always me like pointing them on the path to their own sovereignty. Mm-hmm. They were, they were given free space to make a lot of decisions for themselves with my guidance, but it's, it was always coming back to what do you think? And what do you feel? Right. I was, you know, you know what we didn't, what, you know, we do when we don't, what we don't have growing up, you know, we try to flip it, you know, but my kids are like, it's so hard for me to relate to the kids around me, to the young adults around me, because they're just, they have their own issues, but they're not caught up in, in the matrix. They're not caught up in it you know even today my daughter was just saying she was like and first of all my son my youngest son is like you know if we could just be plebeians this kid with this word i'm like who uses that word i I had to go look it up i had to go look it up i was like what the hell does that mean you know and he's that's how you but that's how you know you're doing a good job when your kid uses words like plebeian then uh, yeah yeah, and i'm I'm just like (laughs) it's like why couldn't we just be like you know, and I'm like, I'm, I could not, I'm not a follower. And so you weren't going to be, you know, and my daughter today was talking about, there's this new thing out apparently. First, it was the thigh gap for, for young girls. Mm-hmm. We won't even go there, okay. but, but now there's, there's something happening where girls don't want the, the natural indentation that happens from the pelvis. And then there's a dip and then your hips come out. Right. Right. They want to be round like an anime character. They just want to go from hip to round. They don't want to see that the bone has does what it does. And then the hips come out. And I'm like, I, I cannot with this. <laughs> like, and they don't get it. They don't, they don't get that all of this stuff is directed at women. Yeah. You know, to try and keep us in a certain way. They like they don't see it. They don't see it. And I'm like, no. They, that, they that's don't. so interesting that because I I've been seeing that more and more, but I didn't know that was a thing that's happening right now. There's always a new thing, yeah. but it's always directed at women. Yeah. When we talk about this, it's this yeah. is not, you know, no thing for men to go, you know, I know there are men who get artificial pecs, but you don't see it sprawled across social media the way it right. is for when right. all these things, right? And so we talk about, you know, the dampening of the feminine power and stuff like that. Um, yeah. but yeah, they don't they don't once you're on this path, that's it. It's you know, and I tell them I'm sorry, there's nothing I can sorry, not sorry. This is right. this is just what it is. But how how old is your oldest? My, so my bonus daughter for my for my marriage, she's thirty three, and then okay. um, the children I birthed are twenty four, twenty three. One is about to turn twenty, and the youngest is will turn eighteen. Uh, both of them this spring. So give it like five years, they will all thank you for the way that you raised them, because kids today don't have that. They they don't have that level of sovereignty. You know, like one one thing that I noticed when I went back to uh, uh, the the local community college here for um, my poli-sci associates. Mm -hmm. And one one thing, and and, you know, me being the age that I am, I was in in a course with uh, mostly Gen Z, uh, is it Gen Z? Yeah, Gen Z, Mm -hmm. the, the younger generation. Um, yeah, it's early twenties. Early twenties, yeah, uh, uh, late teens, sort late, of thing. Yeah. Um, and one one of the biggest things I picked up was that most of them just don't have a voice. Yeah. They don't. They don't. They've been told what to do for for how however long K through twelve, mm-hmm. and it's do this assignment, read this, do that. And there's no, especially the the assignments, there's no like critical thinking where you can, you know, really bring yourself and and creatively express yourself on the page, you know? It's like, what did so-and-so say? Write that down, that's your homework, you know? And I noticed no one was speaking from their power in this college level course, you know? No one was speaking from, no one was, no one, showed the initiative to raise their hand first, you know, because they knew the thing in, intrinsically, intuitively, they knew the thing. I want to speak on this because I have that power. I can say this thing. Yeah. It's like everyone was hiding, you yeah. know? So I think your kids are really going to thank you in the, in the future for, for what you've given them. That's, that's a powerful that. way to raise your kids, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I believe so. They, I told them they just have to grow into it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, 
So, I mean, it's it's not really the new year, it's a month in, but um, what are you calling in for yourself this year? Oh, wow, that's a great question to ask me because um, I haven't asked myself that question yet. Nice. Um, yeah, so thank you for that. Um, and it'll be recorded, so I really got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What I'm the so I, I always go with I always go with first thought best thought mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. um and the first mind the first word that came to my mind was love mm-hmm. which my inner you know my inner child is like oh no 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 <laughs> we're not ready for that right but my sovereign self is yeah we are. We are you. You spent you spent the time doing the things, and 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 there's more. There's a level that that I that I know that I won't reach without partnership. Like I I know this, and so I what I'm. This is the first time I'm saying this out loud, <laughs> Kevin. But what the first time I'm calling in is 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 partnership. Wow, that's frightening to say. Yeah, but it's it, what's it, true. It feels. I feel it over here. It feels good. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's not yeah. what I would have expected the answer to be. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I'll admit for myself even that that um I I was ready to do just continue a life doing this work on my own, you know. Just um, you know, really diving into the work and 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 living my life from that place. Um but in partnership like we were saying before, like hitting those places that are that are hard and, and continuing to soften around them. There is no one, no one on earth that can trigger me more than my partner. <laughs> I, I, I love you. I, re- I love your relationship, by the way. Thank you. I love it. It's it's beautiful to have watched it over the years from a huh, that looks interesting to, oh, it's a thing <laughs> to, <laughs> to see it progress. Yeah it's, yeah, it's been beautiful. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it, you, you're challenged in a way that you know you're committed to that you can't, you can't run away from it because you want to be there for that third, that third entity, whatever that thing is that you're creating together. You know, yeah. um, and and it works you. It works you like a washing machine. You know, and and staying on your practices while that's happening is the hardest thing to do because you want to check out. You want to check out and just watch TV and uh, you know, I'm gonna do my life. I'm gonna turn to one of those sports guys, <laughs> the, the, the the couch potatoes. But okay. but no, it's you know you you. you you find you find the power in it, and you 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 let it you let it wash over you and work you, and, and you become stronger on the other the other end of it. You know, yeah. so that's and that's a beautiful thing to call in for this year. Thank you. Yeah. You know, in a, in Islam, there's a saying that uh that marriage is is three fourths of the religion. Mm. Mm. That's how deep it is to be in partnership. That mm. that's it's going to test you to the level. That seventy five percent of your faith and belief mm-hmm. is that partnership. Twenty five percent of it is is you over here, but that that is where you will see the the nooks and crannies. That is where you will be tested. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <sighs> but thank you. I love yeah. that. Now That's I have to good. tell people about it. Good. Spread it. Spread that yeah. love. <laughs> um. Uh, so as we wrap up, uh, do you have any any offerings, any any events that you want to communicate to the audience? Let them know what's going on for you. I know you're you're just coming off of a of a, a down, but you anything churning? And, and things are churning right uh-huh. now. My membership group for women is open. I wasn't speaking about it because I just needed the space. I do have mm-hmm. women in there, and I I appreciate their grace because uh, I'm very transparent. Like. I need to stop teaching for a while. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to be coming back in. And they, they've hung out in the group. Yeah. Um, but so I do have a private membership group for women. It is, it is on Mighty Networks because that's the, that's the place to be. Um, mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll post all the links. Uh, oh, thank you. So thank you. Yeah. Have easy and access to that. 
Yeah, thanks. And there's a library of my teachings in there, videos that I've done. So they have access to all of that. Um, So that right now, that is what that is what I have open as as well as just learning from me on social media, YouTube and all those places. But it's it's the membership group that I really want to I really want to spend my time in there with those women. And then eventually uh, I will um, offer again my level. It's I say it's a level one program reveal, but that's that's going to be probably later in the spring or the summer. Okay. Well, Maisha, this has been honestly one of the best conversations I've had during this uh, the tenure of this podcast. So thank you. Thank you for I'm, coming I'm on. honored that yeah. you even asked me. Really, I am. Of course, I had to have you on here. Um, I, I, you know, I want I want to start getting more and more people in this vein, and then doing like crossovers with with. The, the regular stuff that I do, touching on regular issues and, and, and policy and stuff like that and crossing over and having having uh, just varying voices on here that, that can just both, because I want to I want to I want to shine a light on specific people uh, vis-a-vis you and, and others and, and, you know, talk about things that I find important. So that's that's basically what this is. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah. Right. So fun. I've, I really enjoyed this conversation. I have as well. Um, so this has been another episode of the Purple Fox Podcast, and this is your host, Kevin C. Eze, here with the lovely Maisha, um, signing out. Have a good day.